You know, it's one thing to stand in the shoulders of our leaders as opposed to standing in their shadow. And what I'm about is, how do you get on the, the shoulders of, your, of the leaders and take what they've said and add to it as opposed to just reinforcing what they've said? Guys, I've got a really special guest today. This is Dr. Paul Homily. Josh, hey, I'll see how to you first. Thanks for having me. Hi to everybody yeah. out there. What I thought I'd start off with, probably something most people don't know about you, but you actually <clears throat> had your own marketing company. Yes, I did. Yeah, tell us about that. I, I think I was one of the first marketing groups in dentistry. You probably were. In 1979, Bates versus Arizona, federal law allowed professionals to market directly to the public. That made dentists, physicians, attorneys, architects, pharmacists, that was a new deal. Yeah. I immediately jumped right on it. That first generation to me of, of okay, marketing is now legal. Right. Still, that first generation almost didn't want to have much to do with oh, it. Oh, they didn't want anything to do with it. If you were marketing, if you if you were a dentist and you marketed, that was a signal to the profession that you were doing something wrong. You were either yeah. a bad dentist or you're a greedy dentist, or there was something dysfunctional about you. Because the core belief is, if you're a good dentist, patients will come to you Patients will, the line will extend for miles outside your office for all the people who will want your care. All those cliches that the dentists wanted to believe. They yeah. wanted to believe that it was true. But when they went back to their office, they, hell, half of them had a hard time getting the lady from across the street to come into their practice. Yeah. But yeah. you know what, as a result of it, Josh, I did the dentistry that I love to do. I did it every day. I was seeing 20 to 40 new implant patients and I did that for 20 years. Yeah. And I did that prior to internet. And so marketing for me, I've seen it gone from the outhouse to the penthouse. Before if you marketed it was a symbol that you were a bad dentist. Now yeah. everybody markets. Yeah. The problem though is that Dentist marketing or like dentists doing haircuts. They think they can do it, but they can't. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. And so consequently, <laughs> when you see bad marketing, yeah. when you see bad marketing, that pulls us all down. I, I've got a filter and I still market. I, I market my, my business that I'm in yeah. right now. I've got three rules, three filters. If I'm going to consider an activity, I first ask, is it good for the patient? Okay. That's the first rule. Number two, is it good for the practice? And number three, is it good for the profession? Yeah. If marketing doesn't serve those three, then it's bad marketing. And, yeah. and you've seen marketing where it talks about, here are the mistakes that other dentists make. Why say that? That doesn't do anything yeah. for the profession. That's a great way to say that. I, I know one of our mission statements has just been along that whole line of, look, we could, we could do really great marketing for the single practice, but we could also do really great marketing for the industry. Like marketing that the industry deserves and can be happy, proud of. Absolutely, because in, in my era growing through the whole, the, the, the big marketing icon was the, was the dismembered lower molar, the dancing yeah, molar. The Not only is it bad marketing, but it, it makes us transactional. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's just come here and buy this. Yeah. And, and it, to me, dentistry has such an opportunity to enhance people's lifestyles. Yeah. So, I mean, from literally a generation that didn't want anything to do with it to one or two generations later, now it's, it's assumed. I mean, the millennials coming out of school are like, you know, already have a budget in mind or are coming after it. Absolutely. Do you think, is it easier to market today? I think it's much harder. Yeah. Because we're just, we're just overwhelmed with all these messages. Yeah. You know, they say the internet connects people or social media connects people. Well, I think it does in a very superficial sense. But after a while, we get information overload and we just want to shut it off. I mean, when I come home from this trip, I've been here a couple of days, well, it seems like a couple of days, and when I come home, I'm gonna have just umpteen emails. How many of those will I really read? It's, yeah. it's, it's garbage. And so I'm delete, 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 and all that. And, and, and so back in, before all of this, where you really had to get off your wallet to market, now you can market kind of on a shoestring. You yeah. just throw some stuff out there yeah. on Facebook Live or whatever. Now you're competing against all this all this noise in the marketplace, I think it's much more difficult to find a unique message that really rings well. That's why I'm so attracted to what you're doing. Yeah. When I first saw your work about helping dentists tell their story, now there, that's a unique point of view that yeah. I really like, and I think that's really gonna work well for you. Yeah, yeah, I, that's kind of been our deals. I, dentistry needs better stories, you know? It does. So, 
Um, so you, at some point, you transitioned out of marketing into the case, I mean, you've kind of become known as the case acceptance go-to guy. Yeah, I began to notice my marketing clients were saying, oh yeah, we got 30 calls, we got 15 calls, we got this, well, how many cases are you doing? Well, you know, my area is, and then they'd start making excuses, and I realized that what they were hoping to buy from me were implant patients, but I wasn't selling implant patients, I was selling them contacts to yeah. patients who are interested in implants. There's a difference. Yeah. There's a difference between a response and a sale. And I realized that the choke point in practice development is not so much in the marketing, but it is in the case acceptance process. Mm. And I thought, what if I combined marketing, which I knew, with the case acceptance piece? So I put those two pieces together. Well, after I put them together, that's when my life changed. I still remember one of the, probably, I mean, maybe one of the first things I learned from you as at a seminar, and it was, you know, it was a clinical, a bunch of dentists, and right. you know, talking about case acceptance, but it was making it easy for patients to say yes. That's exactly right. And you had that whole concept of, of there's the readiness, and sometimes they're not ready, and you're stacking them up, and at some that's point right. they will be ready. Sure. Um, I think it's an incredible, like, patient strategy for even running a business. Well, especially for the complex care patient. The complex care, the complex care patient where it's paying eight, 10, 12, 15, 20 thousand dollars, they may want the care, they may understand why they need it, but it just might not be the right time. They may have a son in college or going through a divorce or getting married or moving yeah. their home. So it isn't the right time for them. So it's immediately and overwhelmingly obvious to them that I'm the guy to deal with. It's just a question to win. Now, the trick is just don't make them mad, don't educate them out of your office, right. make it, Make it okay for them to have bad teeth for now. Yeah. Don't judge that. And when they become ready, they'll come in and when they come ready, they're just waving the treatment plan. They're going, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. I know, I mean, it seems like more and more dentists are, are interested in speaking, trying to be good communicators. Obviously, I think part of the byproduct of living in this digital age with sure. social media and everything is we're all communicating way more. Right. What is an average conversation? You're at an event, you're speaking, a young dentist comes up and says, I want to be a good speaker. What is that conversation well, look it's, like? It's, it's, and it's one I have all the time. I yeah. say, terrific, what do you want to speak about? What, what, are you, what are you passionate about? What have you got to offer? Yeah. Sometimes I hear, well, you know, I really believe in the oral systemic link. My father died of a heart attack. It turns out he had XYZ disease, and I'm really compelled to spread the good news of that. And, and see, that's a substantive speaker. Yeah. He has a reason to speak, right? Other people will come in and say, hey, how many want to be a speaker? And I say, well, terrific, what do you want to speak about? I don't know, I just like speaking. <laughs> just and I just <laughs> smack them upside and I say, get the hell out of here, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> and, and I'm being a little facetious yeah, there. Yeah. But, it, it, Speaking is a distribution system. Yeah. It's a, it's a distribution system to intellectual property or thought leadership. Yeah. You can speak about it, you can write about it, you can make online programs about it, you can do blogs about it. There's a lot of distribution mm. systems now that didn't exist before. The thought leadership is, is really inspiring your listeners such that they hear something original and new. So much of what we hear from the front of the room is thought repetition. Yep. They'll quote Panky or they'll quote Einstein or they'll quote somebody and they'll do a case study and say here we're establishing the vertical dimension, uh, anterior guidance so it discludes all posterior content and these centric movements. Well that's been said one trillion times, right? right? What I'm about is, is how do you get to the next level? You know, it's one thing to stand on the shoulders of our leaders as opposed to standing in their shadow. And what I'm about is, how do you get, how do you get on the, the shoulders of, your, of the leaders and take what they've said and add to it as opposed to just reinforcing what they've said? Yeah. Nothing wrong with reinforcement, but that's not my world. Yeah. Man, I'm so so happy that you're here in Columbus with us. Yeah, this has been fun. The yeah. whole day has been fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and just from me to you, I mean, I gosh, what you've taught me about a communicator has just been so invaluable. Um, I, I'll tell people, I'm like, I think he's technically one of the best speakers I've ever heard because it's not just like this gifting, there is this layered structure. and Oh, like, there's a process to it. Yeah, sure. yeah. right. And, yeah. and so I've loved that. You've taught me so much and I think that's so valuable. I want to see that story and that message. I want, I want to see you help dentistry tell a better story as well. <laughs> that's you know? right. Uh, guys, thanks for being here. Uh, check you out on the next episode. See ya. <laughs>